This video is brought to you by catbeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. The Orlando Magic have been an average or below average team for a while now. Ever since they made the Dwight Howard trade, they have yet to make the playoffs. That was all the way back in 2012. In that trade involving four different teams, the Magic actually got back a massive package of players and picks. These were the details of that trade. They received Aaron Aflalo, Al Harrington, Nikola Vucevic, Mo Harkless, Josh McRoberts, Christian Ayanga, and three future first round picks from various teams. This seemed like a great deal for the Magic to rebuild, but over the years, the organization made some terrible trades and signings that crippled the team. And up until right now, they still don't have a single playoff appearance to show for it. How's it going fellas? My name's Andy, and today we're going to take a look at what in the world have the Orlando Magic been doing for the past 5 or 6 years. To start things off, let's first take a look at the 2012-13 season. Their first season after losing Dwight. They won 20 games the entire season, with their leading scorer being Aaron Aflalo, averaging about 16 points a game. The Magic were expected to just ride the season out and see what they get in the draft, but before the trade deadline, they made a pretty big trade. It was a good trade too, one of the only good trades they made during this era. They traded away JJ Redick, along with some other throw-ins for Tobias Harris from the Bucks. Redick was a good player, of course, one of the best shooters in the league, but at nearly 29 years old, his timeline did not fit the team's future plans. However, the 20-year-old Tobias Harris turned out to be a gem. Before, he was rotting away on the bench in Milwaukee, but in Orlando, he was thrown into the starting lineup and played very well. Unfortunately, the Magic traded him away after he showed a huge improvement. I'll talk about this later, but it really made no sense, but I think part of the reason could be because of coach Scott Skiles. He apparently was not a fan of Harris's playstyle, and this was actually the second time he wanted him gone. Back in Milwaukee, Skiles was the coach there as well, and he traded Tobias to Orlando in the first place. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny, but it sucks. I mean, Tobias was very young and he was making strides in his game, but they were impatient and gave up on him so quickly. Anyway, after finishing the season with a 20-62 and record, the team was awarded with the number 2 overall pick in the draft, the pick they used to draft future all-star Victor Oladipo. Oladipo had a pretty good rookie season, and the Magic finished the 2013-14 season with a 23-57 and record. It's not great, but the team was showing signs of improvements. The other young players on the team, like Nikola Vucevic, Mo Harkless, and Tobias Harris looked promising. At the time, they were in a good situation and rebuilding faster than usual. Vucevic and Harris looked like they had all-star potential, while Oladipo showed flashes of that as well. On top of all this, they still had a bunch of future first round picks coming up. So in theory, the future looked bright. Unfortunately, a couple years later, both Oladipo and Harris would be gone. And now the Magic are watching them blossom on other teams. Up until now, Vucevic is still on the team, but he's no longer that young star with high potential we all thought he was. For the last 7 years, he's been a double-double machine, but overall he's been up and down. But to give him credit, nowadays Vucevic is looking really good. He's been looking like a legit franchise player. Moving on to the 2014 offseason, the Magic made some major trades. The first one was drafting Dario Saric with the 12th overall pick and then immediately trading him to Philadelphia for the 10th pick, Alfred Payton. They threw in another first round pick in the deal as well. Now, there's nothing wrong with this trade, it wasn't bad. I mean, if you compare Saric and Payton, the talent difference is minimal. But the issue was, after three seasons of playing in Orlando, the team did not even extend Payton's rookie contract. Instead, they traded him to the Phoenix Suns for a second round pick. Which, in most cases, basically means nothing. While Payton was not amazing in Orlando, he showed steady improvement and by the 2017-18 season, he was playing pretty well before he got traded. And nowadays, he's a decent player. So, Payton was another player who the Magic felt wasn't worth keeping. On the other hand, the Magic did make a good trade in the same offseason. Aaron Aflalo has been their leading scorer for the past few years, but he was not going to be a part of the team's future. They traded him to the Denver Nuggets for Evan Fournier, a young shooting guard with high potential. 
He averaged over 17 points a game for a couple of seasons, a great 3-point shooter, and sometimes it looked like he was on the verge of becoming a star. As of right now, Fournier is still on the team. Just like Vucevic, he's had his highs and lows, and even though he showed flashes of stardom, he never made the jump. However, even if Fournier never becomes a star, getting him in a trade for Aflalo was probably Orlando's best trade during this era. The 2014-15 season saw the Magic slightly improve once again. Vucevic, Oladipo, and Harris all had breakout seasons, but the team was not good, mainly due to coaching. In the 2015 offseason, they gave away Mo Harkless to the Blazers for nothing, and Harkless instantly did better in Portland. They also drafted Mario Hezonia with the 5th overall pick, and he did not turn out too well. Now with the New York Knicks, he barely looks like an NBA player. For these two guys, I wouldn't say it was a bad decision to get rid of them because they honestly didn't show much to make them worth keeping. Moving on to the 2015-16 season, this was when they had their best season since Dwight left. But in reality, it gave them false expectations. What I mean by this is that they won 35 games, which is much better than before, but it gave them a false hope that they could be a playoff contender. This encouraged them to make some ridiculous trades in order to win now. Except they weren't good enough to win now. Here are the two main trades I'm talking about. The Tobias Harris for Ilyasova and Jennings trade happened right before the trade deadline. I mentioned earlier how Skiles was not a big fan of Harris, which is why this trade happened. The Magic had a 24-29 and 29 record before the Harris trade, but finished the season going 11-18. and 18. Then Ilyasova and Jennings left after the season was over. So they basically gave away Harris for free. To pour salt on the wounds, they could have kept Harris if they wanted to. But instead, they used that money to sign Jeff Green for $15 million. What's crazier is that, according to Jeff Green himself, the main reason the Magic signed him was because in the previous season in Memphis, Green went off for 30 points against the Magic. In a press release, the Magic said, That game, in addition to Green's enormous potential and defensive versatility, played big roles in the Magic pursuing and signing the 6'9", 235-pound forward. What enormous potential are they talking about? Jeff Green, at that point, was already 30 years old. He's been super inconsistent in his entire career. So, yeah, I don't think that's a legit reason to sign him and let Tobias Harris go. And of course, the second terrible trade was during the 2016 offseason, where they gave up Oladipo and the 11th pick, Domantas Sabonis, for Serge Ibaka. Now, I can see from their perspective why they got rid of Depo. He regressed in his third year and was playing worse than Evan Fournier. But still, the whole point of rebuilding is to let your young players develop. What in the world is Ibaka supposed to do? He could maybe help them reach the playoffs as an 8th seed, but that's the best he could do. He's not going to carry the franchise any further than that. Oh, and Sabonis has been balling out for the Pacers. To put the cherry on top, a couple weeks after they made the trade for Ibaka, they also signed Bismack Biombo to a 4-year, $72 million contract. This was probably the most questionable free agent signing that season. Why would they want him after they already have Ibaka? Biombo is basically Ibaka without a jump shot. Yeah, he played well in the playoffs with Toronto, but that's such a small sample size. In 2016, they also hired Frank Vogel as their new head coach, but he got fired after just two seasons. Personally, I think Vogel is a good coach. I don't think he was given a fair chance, considering the abomination of a roster he had to work with. Unsurprisingly, Orlando's desperate attempt to make the playoffs failed. When they finally realized they made a mistake, they traded away Ibaka halfway through the season for Terrence Ross and a first round pick. So basically they turned Oladipo and Sabonis into Terrence Ross and a late first round pick. They could have been what Indiana is right now, a dark horse contender. Although Ross has been a pleasant surprise according to the team, he's been a great voice in the locker room and helps out the young guys at practice. This brings us to where we are now, a team whose future is very uncertain. We're still waiting for that breakout season where everything gels together and the team finally returns back to the playoffs. But we don't know when that's going to happen or if that's going to happen with this core of players. 
Aaron Gordon looks like he could be their new franchise player of the future, but right now he's still sharing the responsibility with Vucevic and Fournier, who are both in the middle of their primes. Mo Bamba and Jonathan Isaac are very raw, but they've shown that they could play. These two could eventually take over the team when they develop. Over the last few years, the issues with the team go way beyond the bad trades and bad signings during the Rob Hennigan era. Sometimes it seems like the players don't develop until they leave Orlando, which, uh, that's kind of an issue. The Magic have gotten some flack for their player development. It's no secret that they've invested very little in their player development staff, and that's the main reason why they've gotten nowhere since 2012. Anyway, that sums up the story of the Orlando Magic since the Dwight Howard trade. While originally it seemed like they got a great package in return, the rebuild has gone slower than expected. Also, big shout out to Cappies.com for sponsoring this video. If you want to customize your own snapbacks and hats, check out the link below. Let me know your thoughts on the magic. Do you think they can make the playoffs in the near future? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.